So ven, pronounced with a W, by the way, in ancient uh, Latin, and then uh, in the Middle Ages, it, it started taking on the V sound. Um, but just to avoid confusion, I'll just um, pronounce it as a V. So ven and ventus. Okay, now, um, little footnote, ventus or ventus in Latin means wind. And not coincidentally, because, you know, the wind is something that comes. It comes, uh, you know, it moves. Okay, so, um, so you get ventilate or, or actually the word vent itself. Okay, but we're not going to focus on those words. So venio or venio in Latin means I come. I come somewhere. So when people get together, such as we're doing now, we have convened in this classroom. We literally have come together. Now this is through French, okay, the vine. Um, oh, that's another, by the way, the, the E ending, when you throw that E uh, with humane and with convene, it's through French for whatever it's worth. It's a linguistic element in old French, uh, not Latin per se. But anyway, so, so to convene is convenio um, through French, because convenio in Latin means to convene as well. Okay, so to convene, come together just as those people are doing, and now watch this. To convene writ large is to attend a convention. A convention is a convening writ large. Okay, when a bunch of people get together. It literally means being coming together. It's this giant event, a convention. Now, sometimes it's used in a joking way. You know, this little convention of ours, you know, two or three people, but that's not the, the real proper way of using it. Um, convention would be um, convening a bunch of people at once. And now you get a really interesting use of the root in convenient. When something is convenient, we know that the end means being, right? The state of, you know, or being, being coming together. So how does it mean that? When something is convenient, what does it mean? Being able to buy your $10 coffee at Starbucks with your phone is convenient for you. Why? Because they have come, they've met you halfway. They've come to you, right? Con together to come together, they've come together, they've offered you, they've put out a laurel for you, a, a fig leaf or whatever, um, a symbol of their wanting to accommodate you as best they can um, without you know, giving you the least amount of trouble as possible to pay your money to them. And so they're gonna make it as easy as possible uh, to pay uh, and, and as quick as possible and, and hassle-free as possible. The idea being that they come to you and we're gonna offer you this and then all you have to do is just put your um, phone next to it and, and you get to pay for it. Or if you're sitting in your chair, it's convenient to use the remote control. And the idea is that the TV manufacturer has gone out of their way to come to you and hand you the switcher so you can just sit there. You know, and think about Wall-E in those chairs with people running around and getting fed, you know, um, without any effort. Um, so that's the idea, coming together. Something comes to you. Don't, don't worry about coming to us, we'll come to you. It's kind of the idea behind convenience. And then that's the idea behind a, a convenience store. You don't have to go to the market. You don't have to go to Starbucks. You don't have to go to um, Domino's. You don't have to, you know, you name it. We have it all, right? We're going to put it all out there for you in one place. It's convenient. Coming together with you in one place. All right, speaking of the ancient gods, the, the, the Olympians, quite often in Homer, in the Iliad, in the Trojan War, they will intervene in the affairs of human beings. It means they come between the events of human beings. Event is coming up, by the way. Or, in this case, dominoes would be toppling over in order until this guy, this rude guy, placed his hand in the way as an obstacle, and now he interve intervened and kept it from going through the normal course that it would be going through. And then the, the, uh, the noun intervention is most often used, especially because of the TV show, I guess, uh, with this idea of getting over something terrible, you know, in the, in the case of the TV show of drugs. Okay, so an intervention literally means 
being coming between, between you and the drugs that you're addicted to or, or something like that. Okay, so an intervention literally means coming between, coming between you and, and, your, and your kryptonite or, or your nemesis or something that's bad for you. All right, Advent, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with just the generic meaning of the word. It has religious overtones um, as well, um, but just regular Advent, straightforward, neutrally means arrival of something or someone. It means the arrival, um, we'll, we'll get to arrival later. Um, but Advent is just coming toward, a coming toward, an arrival, a coming toward somebody or something. And so the example the dictionary gives is the advent of television, and that's why I put that image there, because that was a giant deal uh, in the early 50s when TV made a big uh, s splash in society before the internet, before you know, any of that. Movies were out there, but you know, and so that was a big deal. So the advent, the arrival, the, the coming toward. Coming toward what? Coming toward the living rooms of America and expanding um, their idea of what's going on in the world by means of it. Okay? And then when you talk about an adventure, it's a little different than Advent. So, so you're kind of playing around with changing this. Uh, the Advent is a noun and so is adventure. And what's the difference between them? Now again, with the Ur, I'll just bore you one time with a linguistic fact just so you know that you don't want to ask anymore what these endings mean. Um, the Ur okay, is the future participle of the Latin verb, meaning about to whatever. Okay, so adventure literally means about to come toward, okay, in Latin. Now, it literally means that in Latin. Listen carefully, you guys. This is a really important point. It literally means what it says, you know, in, um, in terms of the suffix and all, in Latin. So, so tenses and all kinds of other grammatical stuff in the original language meant something. Okay, so adventure literally means about to occur, about to arrive. Once those elements are brought into English, however, for the most part, the grammatical stuff is completely disregarded, okay? So you could say to someone, I am on an adventure right now. Adventure is not only in the future, right? In Latin, it was, okay? So the ur means about to be in Latin, but you bring it into English, and all of a sudden, it's just another way to add to this idea of advent. Okay, and so I'm not going to load you down with those. You're welcome, um, you know, uh, because it, that would be a language class, and I would love that too. But you wouldn't, uh, you know, unless you want to take the language class and you sign up for that. Then I'll be happy to teach you language, uh, you know, grammar and all that. But um, we've done enough grammar already, uh, you know, with the first few days. Okay, so an adventure means going toward something, whereas the advent of something is more like the arrival from the outside to where you are, isn't it? Some, the advent of something, something comes to you, like TV comes to your living room, whereas you go on an adventure, that's more of a, of a proactive idea. You go out, you go toward the world. Kind of interesting. All right, this is one of the more obscure words I, I'll throw at you. I tend to limit these words to really important GRE words, but um, this one you might encounter a little less than half the time on the um, past GRE exams. Um, okay, so archaeologists will often, I mean, every day, use this word, the provenance of a given pot or the provenance of a given um, sculpture. It means where, or I say, it means the origin of whatever thing you're talking about, whether it be in space or in time. Okay, so what is the provenance of that vase? Oh, it was found in, uh, it was made in 526 in in Athens, and it was found at the Agora, at the, the marketplace. That's the provenance of that vase, okay? So it means what? Being coming forth. So where did it come forth from, is the idea. What is its provenance? Where did it come from? What is its origin? Okay, you guys? Now, this is, I told you I was going to contrast occur with a word, and this is the one I'm going to contrast it with. Remember our little occurrence guy? right there. He's still letting things occur to him. That's different than inventing something. When you invent, you come into something. Okay, so you're, you're inventing things. You're going at them. 
you're thinking, how do I make a better mousetrap? And you go toward the goal of achieving that mousetrap as, as opposed to occur, which is things come to you. You're just open. You're open to ideas. You're open to thoughts coming into your head. That's different than invent. It's a more active idea of going or coming into something, coming into the discovery of what you're looking for. How do you come up with a better mousetrap, as they say? Okay, you guys? A little different. Okay, so coming into something, and then the state of that, state of coming into or being coming into would be an invention. All right, when you go to somewhere to experience some event, the place you do that at is called the venue. That's why, you know, you go to a concert. What's the venue of the concert? It means where does the band come to play their music? Venue means come. Venue through French. <laughs> that's, that's a linguistic thing in French. Okay. It's a French word that, that has, uh, it's also used in English. And it means a place where something occurs. And then the, the um, second to last word is contravene. Contra, as you know, means against, and vine means come. So when you go against something, you are contravening it. Now, this is a good example of a specialized use of a verb, though. It doesn't mean go against in a general sense. It usually is referring to laws or principles or some kind of things set in stone that you are considered to have gone against. So if you think of it that way, a speeding ticket is contravening the, the speeding laws. Okay, you're going against them, you're, and that's what the uh, police person is going to tell you, that you uh, went against it, all right? You contravened the law. They're not going to use that word. You broke the law, you see? Now, break, that's Germanic, real simple. Break, you know, brechen in German. Brechen means to break. Ich breche means I break, okay? Uh, contravene is a real fancy schmancy way of saying break. Okay, forget that. We've done enough today. Okay, and then the last one. Uh, or second to last, because we have, I told you, event. Okay, revenue is easy from French, the e ending. Um, come back. It's in this context, it's um, what comes back at you for, uh, as a reward for hard work. Now, if you were from Mars and you came to Earth and you saw the word um, revenue and all you knew was the etymology, you would not know what the heck it means. It could any, be anything coming back. But we know, in this classroom, we know that revenue has to do with money, it has to do with some kind of rewards for what you do. And then the last one is event, okay? Event means come and come out. So when something comes out, it's an event. An event planner facilitates things coming out, etc. I didn't choose these three routes arbitrarily. Another event is the signing of the Declaration of Independence in the history of a certain country you may know about. And does anyone happen to know the beginning of the Declaration of Independence? When in the, what's that? Course. course of what? Human events <laughs> When in the course of human events? Now, I ask you, after just this little hour that we had together, when you see when in the course of human events, does it have a little more depth for you now? That's the idea behind learning these things, is, to, is for these words to resonate with you in a, in a deep way as opposed to just being impressionistic.